On May 3, 1983, in San Francisco, two 55-gallon barrels were found in Golden Gate Park. Police had been called to the scene by two hikers who reported a foul odor coming from the barrels. Police suspected they might contain human remains. They were wrapped in plastic, their lids sealed with cement, but one was leaking. They were taken to police headquarters where they were x-rayed before they were opened so as not to disturb any evidence inside. The x-rays were sent to Dr. Boyd Stevens, chief medical examiner for the city and county of San Francisco. One of the barrels had two bodies in it, and that was evident by two complete skeletons, including skulls and spinal columns, etc. cetera. Uh, one of the barrels had one body in it. Um, we couldn't tell the sex at that time, but we could see that there were dental fillings, uh, metal material consistent with uh, bullet uh, fragments or jackets as well as identifying personal items like rings or earrings and so forth. Now that they knew human remains were inside the barrels, investigators had to determine how they got there. Technicians took their time looking for any clues the killer might have left. Kenneth Moses, an inspector at the San Francisco Crime Lab, began by examining the exterior of the barrels. He hoped he could find some sort of print on the packaging or the tape. I but getting fibers. clean fingerprints off tape can be tricky. More oil. Powder won't work because it sticks to everything. And most fingerprint chemicals dissolve the adhesive, destroying the print. Moses tried an experiment. By combining a dark blue dye, an antibiotic, and water, he concocted a dye called crystal violet. He hoped that when the tape was dipped into the solution, the antibiotic would stick to the protein left on a fingerprint, staining it purple. After 14 hours of labor, slowly processing each strip of tape as it came off, we finally got down around 15 or 20 layers of tape to the last layer. Now, no prints were on any of those hundreds of yards of tape. Finally, we peel off the last piece of tape, put it into the crystal violet, and poof, up comes this beautiful fingerprint. A simple magnifying glass revealed another crucial discovery. Presumably, the killer left a clear fingerprint behind in the fresh cement as he sealed one of the barrels. A synthetic polymer was mixed and carefully spread over the print. When it dried, it formed a near-perfect cast, which was then used to make a record of the print on paper. After four days of gathering all they could from the barrel's exteriors, investigators were ready to open them. One yielded the bodies of two nude females who'd been tied together. The women were later identified through their fingerprints as Glenda Wheatley and Paula Rodriguez, two prostitutes. Rodriguez worked for Thomas Michaels, identified as the clothed male victim in the other barrel. Each had been shot in the head. The victims had been ID'd, but the identity of their killer remained a mystery.